Hello all and welcome to this and as the title says this will be my talking about Money in the Bank pay-per-view and some other things. Yes, we are going to talk about other things as well, but uh, most of you are here to talk about the Money in the Bank pay-per-view, so I will talk about that. If you look at my ratings, um, the ratings probably probably going, well wait a minute, those look weird comparative to the what I gave the final show overall and there's a reason for that. The wrestling on this was good, for the most part, and most of the matches were pretty good. Um, there was some wackiness, I would say, with the finishes um, on some of this stuff. And this was a show that was good wrestling, good all of that, but it didn't it didn't feel anything once you left. And that's it. It, it really just was like, eh, yes, I saw two great ladder matches, but it was like I saw two great ladder matches. And they didn't make you excited to see anything more. They didn't make you the, the winners. I don't think made you decide to do anything else. So yeah, it, it the, the show just felt very flat the whole time. And I don't know if that's because I've been watching all this New Japan crap or crap. I shouldn't call it crap. All this New Japan stuff, this great stuff. And um, I have you know I I did see the last eye pay per view so that I could you know um, see particularly. I heard the main event was surprisingly good. And it was surprisingly great, um, but uh, you know that was that was that was a New Japan B show, this last I pay per view, and it was still I would say better than this show, and it was a B show. This is this is how good, and I know people are like you know they hate people coming on here and bitching about New Japan, but folks, I'm telling you, if you want to see some stuff, go watch the next I pay per view from New Japan. I will talk about that later. Because that show is sick, and we will, and and New Japan right now is beyond sick. But we will talk about that later. Anyways, uh, first match we got to see was the pre pay per view match, of course, which was the Shield, Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins taking on the Usos. This was really good. They gave them time. They let them go out there. You know, I, the Usos are good. They went out there and they were in there with you know Seth Rollins, who's great, and you know Roman Reigns, who. He himself is not all that good, except that he looks the part and he acts the part. His wrestling's not there. I still love the dude because I, 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 he is one of those guys who you look at, he looks like a badass, he acts like a badass, and his wrestling's not there, but everything else is, and you can kind of look past that because what if, if he's in there with people who are good, he's good enough to where he can get by, and it works out really well. This match was great. The it started, crowd was kind of like, eh, you know, this, <clears throat> you know, who cares, it's the Usos, and then there's a spot, and everyone jumped, because they thought the Usos might win, and it got crazy after that, and we had a, this is awesome chant, um, I wouldn't say this was awesome, but this was pretty freaking good, cool to see, uh, this probably got, you know, this was a long match, which usually it was shield matches, it was a lot of fun to watch, Really enjoyed it. You were in um, Philly. Who they're going to enjoy stuff like this? It was good stuff. Then they start off surprise, surprise, with the world title money in the bank um, winner. You know, I, one thing I will say, I and just people comment, people you know, get on my Twitter, tell me what you think on my Twitter. I don't care. But you know, they do the world title money in the bank match, and then they do the WWE title money match. Should they still maybe do? A match at WrestleMania, Money in the Bank, where it is a different briefcase where you can where you can do either title and that be the ultimate wild card where you can cash it in on any title, unlike the other two. Just curious, wondering what other people think. That, I think that would be okay. Would it be overkill? I don't know. Um, this match was really good. <sighs> I, I like Damian Sandow, him winning. I mean, it, it goes along with the Cody Rhodes stuff, but I don't know. Him winning just felt very flat to me. And that's the only reason I, I gave this what it is, is because after the match, I was like, mm. even though there was some fun stuff, there was some good stuff. Um, you know, uh, particularly, you know, um, Cesaro did some really crazy stuff with Jack Swagger, which was kind of cool to see. Um,. I don't know what they're going to do with those guys, with the shield being heel-ish, and, uh, you know, 
maybe you can, maybe you can, you can, you know, turn, I don't know, I don't know, it, I think they would have good matches because of Cesaro, but who knows, anyways, um, but yeah, match was really good, uh, a lot of good spots, what you would expect, there you go, then we get Curtis Axel versus The Miz, it was okay, um, then we got AJ Lee versus Caitlin. not as good as what their other match was, this was, eh, um, wasn't horrible, but still, it was your basic Divas match, which isn't very good. Um, then we got Ryback versus Chris Jericho. Ending to this was weird and sucky, and yeah. Um, match was okay, but the ending was just not what you would expect. And then, we got that ending, we got one messed up ending, with another messed up ending. Um, Del Rio versus Zach, Jack, that. Da, 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 da. Del Rio versus Dolph Ziggler, another fuck finish. This was this, this was a piss you off fuck finish because they were having a really great match, and then they did this stupid ass fuck finish, and you're like, fuck. And yeah, then we had uh, John Cena versus Mark Henry. They had a, I would almost say, really good match. Um, you know, John Cena can do what he can do really well. That's what he needed to do in this match. Mark Henry can do the big, strong monster really well. They went out there. They did that. It was basic. It wasn't great. I thought it was really good. Um, some people might think I'm overrating it a little bit. I could understand that, but I really enjoyed this. Uh, the crowd really got into it much more than you would think. Um, it was a fun match to watch, so there you go. Um, but again... It's John Cena versus Mark Henry. It wasn't anything anyone really wanted to see to start with. It was nice that it was good, but, you know. Um, and, you know, yeah. And then we got the main event, which was which was nice to see. Um, you know, though I will say, if the... Unless you're going to do something, a big surprise in the main event, you know, in the, in the All-Star and the World Title Money in the Bank match, um, I don't know about putting on last. I, I think you could have put on John Cena and Mark Henry. Now, could they have went on after this match? Probably not. That's probably what they were thinking. But, and I understand that. But this was, this was great. No question about it. Randy Orton winning. Eh, I don't, I'm, I'm not, I don't hate on Randy Orton as much as other people do. I, I think Randy Orton's really good. Um, I think he's great, actually. Um, when he goes out there and actually can show what he can do. I mean, when he's in there with people that can work, and who he doesn't feel like, why the fuck am I in here with this guy? Dude's awesome. When he's in there with dudes that he doesn't feel like he should be in there with, then the dude sucks. I mean, it, it's it's he, it, it's that sort of thing. And basically, if he's not motivated, he doesn't give a shit. And uh, so they're, you know, but um, you know, does anyone really want to see him with the briefcase? I mean, what's the why give him the briefcase? He doesn't need the briefcase. Much like last year, John Cena didn't need the briefcase, but there you go. Um, some stuff I liked in this match, you know, I liked the fact that they did the CM Punk versus Daniel Bryan thing for a little bit. Um, the end uh, with CM Punk and, and uh, Paul Heyman was awesome. Paul Heyman getting booed in Philadelphia was something to see, and 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 is re was just says something about Paul. Um, you know, I do wonder if they set up CM Punk and Daniel Bryan taking on um, Axel and and Brock in a tag match at SummerSlam. If they did that, uh, no, please no. But anyways, maybe, I, I don't know. Um, Rob Van Dam, of course, came back. He did good, um, you know. And he did okay. You know, I mean, he was, he, he was definitely, you would think he would be the most over. But Daniel Bryan was probably the most over. Overall, it was a fun show. It was a really good show. But I felt like, you know, especially, especially during the middle part of the show, I was just like, ah, will this end? And then John Henry, Mar John Cena and Mark Henry happened, and I was like, ah, that was pretty good. But the middle of the show, I mean, this, and I understand that, you know, back when they did two, Elimination Chambers at Elimination Chamber. Um, you know, those matches were so long, the two of them, that they, you know, they took up most of the pay-per-view when you had maybe, you know, and the middle of the show was usually not very good. 
and I would always, you know, kind of give him a pass because, eh, it's the middle of the gym. On this, though, it was just like, I don't know. It was just something, and, and there was a hot crowd. It just felt like something was missing. And again, maybe it's because I've been watching so much New Japan, and, you know, I'm just, you know their stuff is just awesome right now. Maybe it was that. I don't know. But I, I just wasn't feeling this pay-per-view. Um, you know, the two money in the making, they're really good and they're great. Um, but they're nothing I, def I I don't think you need to see, per se. Um, and But they are, you know, there's something to see. But it's nothing that's going to, like, I don't know. And there's a couple of spots in both of them that we'll probably see again. Um, because it's, it's that type of thing. But anyways, let's talk about New Japan. Because, yes, New Japan makes me much happier. And I know it doesn't make a lot of people happier, and I'm sure a lot of people are turning it off now. But, um... We do have an eye pay per view coming up next weekend. This show is stacked. This show is beyond stacked. This show is much like the uh, what was that show? That was the and uh, the, the pay per view two pay per views ago, um, which was a stacked show, which turned out not being as good as it probably should have been, um, because it was probably too stacked of a show. This might have the same issue. But there is stuff on here that I don't know if 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 Jito and Jado can kind of if they if they if they kind of go okay we we booked this super stack card and it didn't quite come off the way it should have so maybe if we do we'll we'll see if they can book this maybe a little better because um, on paper this should be like one of the best shows of the year bar none there are there are, <clears throat> the top three matches on the show are crazy. Crazy, I tell you. Um, you've got, you know, your opening eight-man, which is, uh, it'll, eh, it'll be okay, probably. Um, you have the junior tag of Alex Kozlov and Rocky Romero taking on Techi and Takamichi no Kyu, which will probably be, again, okay. Um, you have your IWGP tag titles match, uh, Kojima and Tenzon taking on Yano, and Izuku, that will be uh, maybe I don't know. I, I I have no interest in that match now. Then we have Tanaka taking on Nato, Nato. That should be good. I would hope we have Lasombra taking on Nakamura. That could be good for the IWGP Intercontinental Champion, which Lasombra won in New Japan or in Mexico. Um, that should be good. Uh, we have a six-man. Or an eight man. Um, kind of, you know, more of a storyline match. Um, Prince Debit Screw taking on uh, New Japan. Uh, you have Captain New Japan, Yushin Thunder Liger, Makabe, and Tanahashi taking on Bad Luck Fale, uh, Tamatanga, El Terre, and Carl Anderson. Um, that could be real fun. Um, I doubt it's going to get a lot of time. But, the matches that I would say probably you shouldn't get a lot of time is this one. The IWGP tag title match, which it probably will, but it really shouldn't. Um, uh, Kozlov, the, well, the, the junior tag team title match, again, shouldn't. Oh, I skipped a match. I skipped a very, what could be a really awesome match, because if you've watched the last two pay-per-views, and the tag teams they've been in, these two guys have put on a good match. It, it, it makes you want to see this match, which is... Ishii taking on Suzuki, uh, that should be that could be that could be a lot of fun. Even if it's short, it's their first match, because so it could maybe be short. Still should be fun. Um, then you're gonna get the rematch, Gato versus uh, Shibata. That should be if it, if it's anything like the last two. And the, the, remember, the first one had to fuck finish, and it still was fun, awesome. And then the last match was just insane. Um, this is the rubber. Um, if you're gonna, if you were, if you were before they announced G1, what's the G1? You ask, you will find out if you don't know. Um, I would say Goto was gonna win this, but after they announced the G1, Shibata could win this. He could, he could. I, I could see him winning this, and then maybe, maybe um, losing in the G1. Maybe we'll see. Uh, then we have Nagata taking on Sakuraba. Yes, that's Sakuraba. Uh, that match should be a whole hell of a lot of fun um, as well. And then the main event, 
Uh, Okada taking on Prince Devitt, which should be, if, the, if these guys get any time whatsoever, should be fucking amazing. You have, we have two matches on here, which could be match of the years. You have some other stuff that could be really good. It's really going to depend on how much time, how they book it, all that sort of stuff. But it looks like it's going to be a fun eye pay per view. It's next weekend um, is when it's is when it's it will begin uh, to air. It's twenty five bucks. Definitely worth the money, I would say. Um, worth checking out. And then on the last eye pay per view, they announced the G one. Now, if you don't know what the G one is, G one. If you've stayed this long, I thank you. But if you don't know what the G one is. G one is New Japan's tournament, which TNA based the Bound for Glory series on. Um, they do it every year. Uh, for the most, usually it's they do block A, block B, two blocks. Within the two blocks, they do a round robin, and then the winner of the, of the two blocks within the round robin tournament takes on the winner from each block, and you have your champion. And the champion looks like he will face, or the winner will then face whoever the champion is at, uh, at Wrestle Kingdom. It looks like it may not be that way. Um, it's kind of a money in the bank deal. They they kind of change it every year, so it just kind of depends on how they're going to do it. Now, the two blocks, and this is what's important. We're going to talk about block B first. Um, you have Tenzan, Naito, uh, Nakamura, Yano, um, Takahishi, Suzuki, uh, Shelton Benjamin, Carl Anderson, and Kuda Ibushi. It's good to see Ibushi in here. He's a great high flyer. Uh, now keep in mind. Like I said, it's round robin, so all of these guys are going to take on each other. So yes, you are going to get Abushi versus Nakamura. You're going to get Nakamura versus Suzuki. You're going to get um, Carl Anderson versus Tenzan. You're going to get all of that. Now, how are they going to be? We don't know because I mean, usually they're both pretty even steaming, so there's not like a breakout winner. Usually, you never know though. Um, but Yes, you're going to get all of those matches within this tournament. That's not a one-night tournament. It takes place over, over I think, a couple of weeks, I think is how they're doing it this year. But the next iPay-Per-View, and maybe the next two iPay-Per-Views, will be the finals of this. Now let's talk about Block A. The Block of Death. The Block of Amazingness, is what I would call it. Um, you have Tanahashi, arguably the best wrestler in the world. You have Maccabee. You have Goto, he's pretty damn good. Kojima, he's pretty damn good. You have Okada, yes. Within this, you could have Oga Okada taking on Goto. You could have Okada, you're going to have Okada, Okada taking on Tanahashi again. Not too bad. Um, you have Ishii, you have Lance Archer, you have Davy Boy Smith Jr. So, yes, you'll have Lance Archer, Lance Archer and Davy Boy Smith Jr. taking each other on within this. You have Prince Debit. So, yes, you will have Prince Devitt taking on Tanahashi, Prince Devitt taking on Goto. You'll have Prince Devitt taking on uh, Kojima. You'll have uh, Prince Devitt taking on Davy Boy Smith Jr. And then the last guy in there is Shibata. So, yes, within this, we will get Shibata versus Tanahashi and Shibata versus Goto again. And we will get Shibata versus Okada. We will also get Shibata versus Davy Boy Smith Jr., which could be awesome. It could be. I know people don't think so, but it could be really good. That's what you could have here. Now, last day, um, like I said, might be the last day of the tournament, which usually going into the tournament, there's a bunch of guys bidding for it, and then you're going to get the finals on that. On that, uh, What they'll do is everyone will wrestle once, and then the two final guys will wrestle again. Um, they may do the, the last two days of the tournament on iPay-Per-View. So that could be interesting. So yes, I'm looking forward to this. I'm looking forward to this in such a big way. If I were to guess who was going to win, maybe Nakamura. I would like to see Shibata win myself. Um, Storyline-wise, it might make sense for Prince Devitt to win by a dirty underhand foreign-ish axe. I can see that. But um, And him win the tournament. Um, so really it's kind of... You don't know. There's not a clear-cut winner. Tanahashi could win it again. Set up, you know, Tanahashi versus Okada at uh, Russell Kingdom. Um, lots of stuff. Lots of awesomeness. Yes, yes, and yes again. So, anyways, um, I've yapped on here enough. 
definitely check out the New Japan stuff. Um, like I said, next weekend's paper I pay per view should be awesome. Um, the shows are relatively cheap. The shows have been awesome for the most. I mean, the worst show they put on, the worst show they put on, I would say, is still better than all but maybe two shows that WWE and TNA have put on this year. Man, well, maybe three. Um, if I'm, yeah, maybe three. Uh, yeah, it's that good of stuff. I mean, it's just, it's just that good. Yes, there's Japanese commentary. Yes, I know some people don't like the Japanese commentary. Hopefully, at some point, they fix it. But if you just want to watch some really good wrestling, I would definitely recommend checking this out. Um, looks like it's going to be an awesome show. G1 looks awesome. So, so, so awesome. So geeked out about G1. It's not funny. Um, but anyways, with that, I'm out. Have a good one. Later.